Good morning, everyone. This is Grizzly907LA, your IAO tech geek. And today we're going to be talking about Zorin OS9, the Ultimate Edition. I purchased this yesterday. The total cost in American dollars is about $13. For what you get, it's really not a bad price. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty damn cheap considering that you really can't touch a Windows, Windows 8 license or a Windows 7 license for around $100. So for what you're getting, your contribution more than outweighs the benefit. Let's. Uh, I'm going to talk about the advantages to this and the disadvantages to this, and let's get started. So the advantages: it's ready to go right outside the box. Even with the Zorin OS Core, the uh, the three version, you get everything you need right out of the box to get to work. It's a. Uh, it has Compiz installed already, and for some of you people that don't know what Compiz is. It's a desktop compositing program and allows you to do stuff like uh, like the desktop cube. Uh, let's see here. Wobbly windows. Multiple uh, multiple desktop multiple desktop workspaces. I have four enabled right now. You can enable as many as you want, but however, I don't see the point in doing that. So and that and that's a big thing because when I had a before this I was running a Linux Mint the XFCE edition I had to install Compiz manually and go through all the stuff to get it working properly the um, tweak the settings make sure everything was done right and set it up myself and it's not hard to do but it's time consuming and sometimes I just don't want to deal with it sometimes I just want to get in get something that's working out of the box that I could go that I could start working on. And that's not overly complicated, and Zorin OS fits the bill perfectly. This is a very good Linux distribution for people that are transitioning from Windows XP or Windows 7 into Linux for the very first time. It's very easy to update. It's a one-button update. You just press it. You, you input your password, and it does all the application updates for you. No need to go and update every single application separately. It does it all in one shot. And as a big advantage of, of the Linux operating system in general, especially with the Ubuntu distributions, and I did forget to mention, Zorin, Zorin OS 9 is built on top of Ubuntu 14.04, Trusty Tar, and that is the long-term support. Uh, that is a long-term support distribution, meaning that you will continue to get updates for this for the next five years so you don't have to worry about reinstalling anything or updating anything for the next five years and that's really nice because you could pretty much just set it and forget it and you don't have to go through the cumbersome process of upgrading your distribution every six months so that's pretty good and like I said the core edition the Zorin core edition is absolutely three the ultimate edition around 13 bucks I mean most people spend like two or three times that amount going to a fine restaurant to eat. And like all versions of Linux, there's no need for malware programs like virus checkers, spyware programs, adware programs, etc. because it's very hard to infect a Linux system. Like most uh, distributions Ubuntu has a software center where you could uh, install the software you want without having to jump around and go to various websites or purchase stuff. So let's open up the software center really quick. So here's the software center and they got a bunch of stuff they're previewing and a lot of the stuff on in the software center is, is absolutely free without charge. But they do charge a price for some things. So let's see here. What am I what do I want to look up at? Um not simple screen recorder I'm using now. What's the other one? I forgot. Screen record. Let's type in a search. Okay, here you go. Screen record. We got various programs for that. Kazam, which is a popular uh, Linux program, and we have other uh, we have other um, screen uh, screencasting programs which are free. Now, Windows screencasting programs, you can get some of them for free. And this is just a little side note, but most of them you got to pay for. So that's pretty nice. All right, let's see here. Let's close that out. So Software Center, very nice for getting all your software in one shot. And if you're a little more adventurous, you could do it. Uh, you can you can get software and programs via uh, 
um, Ubuntu's AP, uh, APT program and install it via the command line, but that's not the gist of this video. And another thing I like about the um, about this distribution, besides having just about everything you can need, I mean, look at all these accessories you get for this program. That's just the accessories part. Then there's the, you know, you get a bunch of games, a bunch of Linux games with it. And this is the Ultimate Edition. Internet browsers, internet programs, I installed some. But here's the thing I like about Zorn, especially if you're a relatively new user to Linux, you just click on Zorn Web Browser Manager and we'll put in my password. And you can, I already have Google Chrome installed. It comes with Firefox pre-installed. And you also get a choice of the Opera Browser and the Midori Browser. And it installs it for you so you don't have to worry about uh, fumbling your way through that. It's very convenient. And like I said, the, the biggest thing about the Zorn OS is the fact that it's it's very convenient, it's polished, it's well-themed, it's ready to go out of the box. You don't have to really do a lot of work to get to look the way you want it to. And I really, compared to some, uh, compared to like doing a standard issue Ubuntu installation, I really didn't have to do a lot of work to get this looking the way I wanted it to, as opposed to Linux Mint or Ubuntu, I already said that, or many other Linux distributions. And continuing on with the software, we go to the office session, and there's some of these things I haven't even heard of. But you get your standard LibreOffice suite, you get a PDF mod. Uh, now, is that a PDF um, maker? Because that'd be awesome. I guess it is a PDF writer. Windows PDF writers cost a lot of money to to purchase. They are not cheap. So that's nice. And continuing on, so you get you get all home bank and a bunch of other very useful and well put together open source programs. Sound and video, Acid Rip DVD Ripper, Transcoder, Audacity, which I use quite a bit. I use quite a bit to filter out the noise because I do live in a noisy area, and my air conditioner does make a lot of noise. As well as um. Other stuff, DVD Disaster, Gnome Player, and a bunch of other useful tools for you. OpenShot Video Editor, which is a, which is a, in my opinion, a lighter weight version of, um, now where is it, Caden Live. So, with this Ultimate Edition, you do get a lot of uh, stuff, and it's pretty awesome. Sound and Video, okay, I think I was, I already went over that, sorry about that. See office system tools, of course. All your standard issue system tools, but you also get some cool things like the with the, with the ultimate version, like the Zorin Background Plus. So let's see. Start background. So with this background plus, you um you could change your background to where it's a moving background like this. And background plus. Let's go back to that. Let's. See. Stop that. Let's set background. Oh, you get a you know, and you can add other backgrounds too. So that's pretty awesome. So let's see. Are you sure? Yes. All right. You get the space background. Isn't that pretty cool? You don't get this in Windows. So the Ultimate Edition has a lot of nice little bells and whistles to it. And if you're not interested in the bells and whistles, then you'd be more than happy with just downloading the Zorn Core. And let's stop that. And back to the original background. So you get that. Let me see here. Um, system tools. Zorn look changer. You could change the way your um, your desktop layout is with Zorn. You get six choices with the Ultimate Edition, the Windows 7, Windows XP, Windows 2000, a Unity-like uh, setup, a Mac OS-like setup, and a GNOME 2 setup. I'm not going to change the background because I got to go. Then I have to go in and redo everything. And I got it the way I want it, so we're not going to go there on that one. I have my Docky set up, and since using Docky, I've I got to be honest with you, it's really been a nice, um, a nice, you know, nice addition because I could just go right here to my dock bar, get what I want, click on it, and I'm ready to go. So that's pretty damn cool, in my opinion. Somehow the theme changed on me, but we could fix that. And let me see here. 
All right, so those are the nor those are the advantages to the Zorin OS Ultimate, along with the other advantages that you have with a Ubuntu-based uh, Linux distribution. Now, here are some of the disadvantages to Zorin OS 9 that I'm really not too keen on. And mind you, they're not major deal breaker disadvantages or things that things that are going to cause a system to crash or not function properly. If anything, they're my pet peeves. And, you know, and the stuff that I do on a regular basis. So the first one is, you know, Zor the way Zorin OS uh, 9 Ultimate comes is very difficult to change the fonts for the icons, for the menus, etc., etc. So what I had to do was I had to install GNOME tweaks. So we'll go to System Tools, and where is System Settings, oh, Preferences. Then we need to go to Tweak Tool. I had to install Tweak Tool, which is not hard to do. However, it was kind of, you know, it was, you know, it's it's a little bit annoying. And they pooched up my icons, but I was putzing around with the theme, so whatever. It's not, that's, it's not a, you know, entirely, it's not entirely the end of the world. Okay, another one is, um, and I think this is going to be a problem with a lot of people, especially if they're, uh, if they use products that are only made for Microsoft Windows and, or our gamers. And setting up Microsoft programs and games in Linux can be kind of difficult depending on the program and or the game. There is a program called Wine. Wine stands for when Wine is not an emulator. It's a compatibility layer. And what that is is when you you can use it to install Microsoft programs and Microsoft compatible games. And it's a layer of compatibility that has the programs, the the um, the drivers, and the special files to to allow. Uh, Linux to be able to read Microsoft programs. And some things install really easy, some things don't work at all. It's been kind of up in the air for years. I mean, my game, the game I like to play, Star Wars The Old Republic, I can install it, but it's a little buggy, especially with the mini-map and the map uh, causing the, um, the game to crash. But other than that, it works fine. I've also installed DC Universe Online. It works okay. The only thing is I have to disable my... Uh, my second monitor because of some weird wine glitch, but that works fine. And yeah, it can be a pain in the butt for a lot of people that are that are using things like Photoshop and other stuff like that. Though there are Linux alternatives out there to those programs, people though, however, are are wed and locked into the into their particular program. It's like the um, it's like back in the day where you had a GM guy that would buy nothing but GM cars. And you had the Ford guy that would buy nothing but Ford cars, and you couldn't shake them from that. Another pet peeve of mine, and this is just this is my pet peeve because I use a, a Logitech gaming keyboard, is the specialized drivers for things like my keyboard and my Logitech gaming mouse, which is not the best gaming mouse out there in my opinion. I should have gotten the Razer Naga instead. I have found a program for the keyboard, but it's a little buggy. It works though. And I could tolerate it, but for some people that might be unacceptable. So certain hard specialized hardware does not work within Linux, and that's not the fault of the Linux community. It's more of the fault of the vendors who are too lazy or in the back pocket of Microsoft to make a Linux driver or even turn over the stuff to the Linux community so they can make their they can make a more stable and a uh, robust driver. Let me see. Is there anything else I forgot to cover in this? So we got all that. All the um. Everything's ready to go. Zorin OS has, uh, you know, a, a, a toolbox of applications. You don't have to worry about buying or downloading extra stuff because most of what you need is going to be right there already. I think I pretty much covered it. I'm sorry if I did go a little bit too fast today, but overall, I'm uh, I did I did some uh, distro hopping, and I re I completely wiped my system and installed Zorin OS 9 Ultimate. But don't worry, my uh, Linux. Mint XFC edition is backed up. I used Clonezilla to do it, and it's a great open source program. However, if you're not used to using command line, uh, command line, using the command line or using drop down menus, it might be a little bit of a learning curve for you, but nothing that is too difficult for anybody that has an average intelligence. And I have it backed up. So, right now I'm using Zorin OS 9. We're going to see how it rolls out. I don't know if I'm going to be distro hopping anytime in the future, but you, you can never tell. If I do, I'll probably do a video on it. Anyway, I've rambled on for long enough. This is Grizzly907LA, 
your IAO tech guy. Hope you all are having a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.